welcome to week two of Come Follow Me. This week we are studying the creation. I really enjoyed the study this week. I ended up getting so much out of it and I just really loved it. For my art journal, I decided to paint a picture with acrylics. I wanted it to show several different elements of the creation, so I added the night sky and the sun and some land and water and plants and some animals. And on the right hand side, I left most of that page blank so that later I could write in my notes. So when you're painting with acrylics, you're painting layer on top of layer. So you want to start by painting your background first because if you don't, then you end up splattering stars all over your trees or something, or you have to paint them in by hand later and it makes it just way harder. So it's better to start with the background first and then move on to the foreground. I also usually mix my paint on a palette before I put it on my paper because I want to make sure that whatever color I'm using is actually the color that I want to be on my page, but I decided to mix my paint straight on the page for the most part because I didn't want it to be perfectly blended. I wanted those streaks of different colors in my brush strokes. And I also ended up turning my brush in different directions to get a lot of different texture as well. These particular paints are also pretty thick, so I would add water every once in a while to my brush just to help the paint move around a little bit more smoothly. I do actually really like these acrylic paints a lot. Normally I would just use some cheap craft paint for art journaling, but these just happened to be on my desk at the time and my craft paint was scattered in a drawer somewhere, so this was just easier today. Either way, I will add links to both of the kinds of acrylics in the description box below. As far as paintbrushes go, I just use ultra cheap ones for acrylic painting. As long as I don't have bristles falling out all over in my painting, I really don't care. So if you're creating a painting like mine in your art journal, the fun thing about acrylics is you can add as much or as little detail as you want. Sometimes with this painting, I would add layers and details while the previous layer was still wet, and sometimes I would wait until it was dry. It just depends on if you want the paint to mix or not. At the very end of this art journal spread, I added in the last few details with a paint pen and a white gel pen. I like to add in a few highlights here and there, especially on the main focus of my picture to help it stand out a little more. Just make sure that your paint is completely dry before using pens over the top or you'll end up ruining them. If you're following along and doing the art with me, you can make your picture as much like mine as you want or you can use it as inspiration for something that's completely your own. You also don't have to use acrylic paints. You can use whatever medium you have or sounds like fun. If all you have are your kids broken crayons, then go for it. Mostly the biggest thing with your art journal is just relax and have fun and get as creative as you want to get. Also, just one last note, if you do create an art journal spread and want to share, post it on Instagram and tag me or add the tag hashtag come follow me art journaling 2022 so I can see it. I'm going to start sharing a bunch of art from people on my Instagram page and I would love to share yours. So now into the study. At first it was hard for me to get anything out of the study. It just felt like the same old story that I've already read or heard a million times, but I knew that if I allowed the spirit to teach me, I would find something that would help me. So I started by asking, what can I personally learn by studying the creation? And one of the first thoughts that I had was how there's such an emphasis on the creation and Adam and Eve when we go to the temple. So why? Why is that so important? I think first of all, we're learning about the nature of God and his power. And why does his power have anything to do with us? Well, we know that his power helps us. Through faith, we can allow his power into our lives. Miracles are brought by his power. We're able to achieve far more through his enabling power than we're able to on our own. When we study the creation, we see just how great and marvelous his power is. And how empowering is that for us? What can't be overcome? When we learn about the creation, we're also catching a glimpse of what our own potential is. 
God intends for us as his children to grow and become like him and our Heavenly Mother. When we look at all the parts of the creation, we can learn a lot about how to conduct our lives here on earth. God set things up here for us to live in little families. The family is central to Heavenly Father's plan, and he is the perfect example of a parent. After God created Adam and Eve, the first commandment he gave them was, Be fruitful and multiply. We declare, as stated in the family of proclamation to the world, that this commandment from God to multiply and replenish the earth remains in force today. I believe then that parenthood is one of the main tools that Heavenly Father uses to prepare us for Godhood. Of course, there are many ways that God helps us to grow and to prepare for eternity. And sometimes parenthood or marriage isn't something that everyone gets to enjoy in this life. But I do believe that if those people are faithful, that will be made up to them and, and more in the life to come. So we're here on this earth to become more like our heavenly parents. So many godly attributes can be learned and attained through parenthood. For example, we learn sacrifice. Parents do what needs to be done to take care of their children, even if we feel like taking a nap instead. God spends an incomprehensible amount of time and energy taking care of us. Of course, I don't know how that all works on a scientific level, but if God decided to take a break one day from holding the law of gravity in motion, I think we'd find ourselves in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and just as God is constantly pouring out blessings and tending to the details of our lives, parents do the same thing for their children in preparing meals, making sure their clothes and beds are clean, and putting together routines to attend to the details of their children's lives. And that's just one example of how parenthood prepares us for godhood. There are numerous things that we can learn. We learn how to work together, hold family councils, just as Father did in the creation of this world. We learn to teach correct principles. Children learn line upon line how to govern themselves, just as Heavenly Father wants us to learn line upon line how to govern ourselves. We give stewardship to our children over small things, just as God has given us stewardship over this earth. And we learn a great many more things as well. Excellence in our work, how to nurture, what true love is, diligence, patience, kindness, and it goes on and on. And to become better parents, we partner with God. We submit our wills to His. We align ourselves with Him through repentance, faithful action, and personal revelation. I'd also like to add that this is also true about eternal marriages. The world wants to diminish the importance of marriage, but that is because it plays such an important role in God's plan and in us reaching our full potential. Another point that I came across while studying is how powerful and important God's words are. We learn not only to engage in the word, but to teach the word. And the word has power. We access that power through faith. Romans 10:17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's why it's important that we speak truth. And it's important that we teach with the scriptures when we can. When we hear the truth, the Spirit testifies of the truthfulness to us. That's how we gain and strengthen faith. I've had many experiences where I maybe started doubting or was unsure about something, and then someone said or reiterated something I already knew, and that was true, and the Spirit was able to confirm that to me and strengthen my faith. That's why it's also important that we go to church so we can discuss truth and hear the testimonies of others and bear our testimonies so that we can help strengthen others and they can help strengthen us. God's words have genuine power and we can see that when we study the creation. So those are some of my thoughts and insights I gathered from my Come Follow Me study this week. If you have anything to add or share, feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe here on YouTube and follow me on Instagram. 
Links to all supplies, talks, and music are all in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support, and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.